Well, I remember at a tattoo convention, and I, I woke up in the morning, and there was an arm laying across my, like this, and God, it was tattoos all up the arm. But God, did I get drunk last night and wind up in bed with a truck driver? So I reached over and felt around, and no, it wasn't a truck driver. <laughs> you scared yourself. Yeah, so there, you know, women are getting more tattoos and more tattoos. My tattoos are empowering. I mean, it's very powerful to uh, to kind of say up yours, you know, really. But check her out. Check by the door, yeah, she's a silly little girl. A different set of rules for us than men, and that's for sure. You know, when I would go out with my husband, he is heavily tattooed like me, um, and people wouldn't even look at him twice, and I'd be right next to him, and they'd gawk. You know, and they, oh my God, how could she do that? You know, when are you going to stop? Haven't you gone too far? <laughs> you know? And that just makes me mad. That makes me want to go get another one. Yeah. Like, oh yeah, you think I went too far? Well, how about now? <laughs> you know? I'm so supportive of other heavily tattooed females. I love it. I love to see women get them on their necks. When women get these beautiful tattoos, and they're bold, and they're in your face, it's just like, yeah. My chest piece, I don't, my chest piece is crazy. I have like a weird, somewhat infatuation with death. Not in like a creepy way, just rebirth, you know what I mean? And then this right here is supposed to be me without skin, you know? Well, that's me as a zombie and eating a bowl of brains. And I always said I wanted like a knowledge tattoo. I have a knowledge tattoo. It's the Sarasvati goddess of book knowledge, along with um, a portrait of my retired college professor father and my graduate school picture of me reading stacks of books. At the time I had decided that I was gonna go to graduate school and become a professor and all this. And I thought, you know, it's like evolution through knowledge and books and birds are free and I don't know, it's just this, <laughs> this kind of idea that I had. And Some were just like, oh, I want, like the traditional stuff, it's just, you know, daggers and snakes and it looked cool. And then I've got like a dagger back here that's for my mom and I just recently got her name in here, Susan. And then this dagger right here is for my dad. He's a golfer, so it's like stabbing a golf ball. That only makes me pure evil. <laughs> You know, women are getting more tattoos and more tattoos, and uh, I can't uh, say that. I'm like Pope John the 23rd. I'm just here to bless, not criticize, you know? And that was his posture, because I'd say that as an atheist. You know, like when I'm out with my grandmother, she's 84, and when we go grocery shopping, you know, she just doesn't understand why I went staring. Uh, my grandfather told me he'd kill me. That's the Romanian side. Oh, you see little kids all the time, like, Mommy, look, Mommy, look, look at that girl over there. She's got this, she's got that. I walk by, I feel eyes are just glaring at me. You know, you get the dirty looks, like, why would you do that? And she kind of sticks up for me, though. She's like, you're just a person. Does that hurt? You know, what'd you do that for? You're such a pretty girl, why you got all that metal in your face? <laughs> that's what you deal with on a day to day. So to have somebody appreciate it on different levels and all, that's cool. Yeah, that's nice. Oh my God, what does that mean? I'm like, dude, I'm covered. What, where do you want me to start? You know, like, I mean, I'm going to work. I, I don't have time right now, you know? <laughs> One of my friends actually, who doesn't have any ink, she said to me, you know, you should like make up a pamphlet. And so that every single time someone approaches you, like you can give them this informative pamphlet. And because um, really that's how many times I get stopped on the street. And it's just like, and after a while people like wonder why I get so pissy on the street. It's like, because I just want to fucking walk to where I want to get to. I don't want somebody to just come up to me and grab my arm and go, oh, you know, but it's, I'm not, you know, a mannequin that you can just come up and look at the merchandise. It's actually kind of getting annoying to me. <laughs> I cover up when I go to the mall. 
because otherwise every single retail person in the whole entire mall stops me, talks to me, and tells me all about the tattoos they want. And I don't get my grocery shopping done, and I can't, you know, get in and out of the, the mall to pick up what I want, and which is good, but it's also like, the general public doesn't quite know tattoo etiquette yet, and that's okay. I'll deal with it. That's a minor, minor thing to deal with. My style is more, um, I'm 10 minutes late, so I need to get up and I grab my jacket. It's usually this one because the like sleeves are really long, so they actually come down and I can just like hold them down there. And I zip it all the way up normally to the very top, so it covers, it like, stops right about up here, like right above the tattoo. <laughs> yeah, this is like the only sweater that'll really do it though, because they like come down, <laughs> which is funny because I... I don't wear Abercrombie and Fitch usually on a normal basis, you know? It's like a sweater I got from my aunt years ago. I just have always had in my closet. It's cute, I just, you know, normally don't wear it. Started going to school and perfect fit. And then it just goes down like that. <laughs> All of my skin is always covered with clothes at work. And my students have never seen my tattoos. I feel like the students have this stereotypical understanding of what a college professor is and um, they think you don't have a life and anytime you kind of step outside of the box of their stereotypes, um, they're pretty surprised. It's okay for men to have tattoos, but it's not okay for women to have tattoos. Like, I don't know, they think you're, <laughs> you're a whore or something, you know, like, ooh, she's got tattoos. You know, what, like why would they do that? Why would you do that? Especially when you're a mother, you know? That's, it's looked down upon. People see a girl and a girl is supposedly more delicate and more everything. And when you see a girl tattooed, everybody starts, oh, what does she do? And how can, if, especially I have kids, you know, and I take my daughters in school. I'm like part, I'm like a volunteer mom. And everybody at first is like, like a little apprehensive towards me, I guess. And then once they meet me, they're like, oh, you know, they even tell me, they're like, wow, you're such a nice person. And I'm like, what did you expect me to be? <laughs> like, you expect me to be somebody, some crazy person walking around? I'm like, no, I'm just as normal. I have, love the same things. I'm a complete nerd in every way. <laughs> I just like to get tattooed. I was, you know, I'm sleeved. I'm pretty heavily tattooed. My friends are about as heavily tattooed as I am. And they, uh, they started having kids left and right. So I went to the bookstore on my lunch break one day, literally, expecting to go find a book like this, and it didn't exist. And I was like, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. A lot of the parents, the, mo the majority of the parents that I've seen are tattooed. You know, like they've talked to me about getting tattooed, you know, it's like, it's our gener, it's most of the parents now are our generation. So our generation is the generation that is getting more tattooed, I think. Stop doing that. That's insane. There's like 27 million people with tattoos in America right now, either of the parenting age or about to be parenting age. So it just made a blind, crazy sense to go ahead and do it myself. I really like the tattoos. <laughs> Me too. A favorite one is this one because it's really nice. And the favorite one is this one. Of course you would. <laughs> <laughs> Because the bones. The bones? Yeah. He likes bones. <laughs> and skulls and stuff. I like the, this one too. Which one's that one? Rod Hot. I'm, a, I'm, I'm gonna be it. I'm gonna be Rod Hot for Halloween. <laughs> uh, Indian Princess. And I like mine. <laughs> <laughs> well, one of my friends, James, thinks that um, they are rock stars. Um, I told them they're not. They just have tattoos. <laughs> <laughs> if you could wash off mom's tattoos, would you wash them off or would you leave them there? Leave them there. Yeah. What about you, Lily? Leave them there. Mm. This one. My roller derby one? Mm -hmm. Um, a school that has a bone and skates with power foot and legs. Roller derby tattoo. It's a roller derby tattoo. It's like you skate around and you practice it every day. And, he, and some of the people go to the hospital. <laughs> <laughs>
last time we had it, um, a girl got hurt, so she went to the hospital, and then, then they, we won, they lost. Then my mom's skirt ripped off. <laughs> <laughs> and the whole team ripped off their skirt. <laughs> and you can see lots of tattoos, huh? One of the reasons I wanted to make this documentary with film was to show how families react to their children having tattoos. And so I was wondering how you feel about me having so many tattoos. Well, I don't really like it, but you're my daughter and I love you no matter what. And when we were in Spokane this last time, um, Dad hasn't seen how many tattoos I have. And so uh, he mentioned uh, tattooing to you and what did he say? Well, he said that he knew that you were seeing this couple of tattoo girls, and and he didn't like that, but and he was grateful that you don't have any because he didn't know he didn't know that you have any, and so if he found out, he probably would have a heart attack. <laughs> and yeah. one of the tattoos I have is of him, so yeah, it doesn't matter. I don't think you may not even like that. They had tattoos in Colombia, in my country, the tattoos is no look good, you know, only for a few uh, um, people. Like the lower class. Exactly, you know, they look like, oh, what happened? She's crazy. After my daughter put the tattoos, real, real, I don't see only the face. When I look in Francesca, I look in the face, the eyes, but I don't look the body because I is scared. Because for me, it's like um, satanismo. Satanism, in other words. Yeah, like the Bible, you know, I very religion. And I, I don't know why you're doing this in your body. You have beautiful body, Fran. You have your face, you everything. You are so beautiful. For me, you like, doll, era my doll. And why don't one day my doll psh, disappear? Yeah, but I'm still here. Yeah, you're here, but, but I'm even I don't feel, I, I don't think you, you, I don't feel the same I have before. I, I feel like something is in the middle, you know? I feel like, what happened? What I doing with my daughter? Sometimes I make questions, and, and sometimes I upset, very upset. And, and she, every time she make one tattoo, look, mommy, what I doing? I put a new tattoo. I was actually gonna ask you if you noticed the new one I got no, touched up. No, I don't like, I... Mom, I have a question for you. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna be getting a tattoo of you on my body. How do you feel about that? You what? I'm getting a tattoo of you, a portrait. No, no, I don't like. Because this is no good, it's no good for me in my religion. It's no good. Yeah, but it's not you who's doing it, it's me. And no, I don't have it's no good. It's no good. It's like me telling Or oh, doing when I die. When I die, you do it. And it hurt me very much because they wanted her to cover her body up to go to a ba um, baby shower. A baby shower and I was totally livid at this point. I mean, really, really upset that I haven't spoken with them very much. And these people, I love them very, very much. But it hurt me so bad that they would make my daughter wear a long sleeve clothes and make her not be who she is, like they were embarrassed of her, but yet love her, because I'm still upset. Because, because she's still, so beautiful. And they still don't understand. And they still don't understand. So I can't understand why some people judge people. Based on appearance. Based on appearance, exactly right. My purpose in life is to cause others to reevaluate their own. <laughs> now, Sam's kind of stuck up or something, but you know what I'm saying? They look at me and they go, man, she's like really freaky, but you know, she's really nice. Wow. Perhaps I should reevaluate how I perceive other people that look like her. You know? And if that happens, then, then that's cool. <laughs>